Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array. Today we're gonna to be talking all about adjustment layers. What are they, how do you use them, and how can you get the most out of them to best enhance your video projects? So here we are in Premiere Pro and we're gonna be going over everything you need to know about adjustment layers. Really simple, how do you add them and what kind of uses can you get out of them? We're gonna go over some basic uses and then some other ones that you may not have realized you can actually use them for. So to start, what is an adjustment layer? Well, let's add one and work with it to see. Go to your project manager, right click, and go to new item, adjustment layer. Or you can also click file, new, adjustment layer. It's gonna default your adjustment layer to be the same size and parameters as your sequence that you've set up. Unless you know what you're doing and have a specific goal in mind, just leave it as it is. Great, so now it's in our project manager and we can click and drag it onto our composition. So what an adjustment layer looks like is actually a clip box that you can add to your timeline. And you can make changes to it like you would any other clip. But the catch is that it will apply those clips and changes to anything that's underneath it. Doesn't matter if there's one clip or 10 clips beneath it. Adjustment layers adjust anything that's beneath it, but it excludes anything that's above it. Let's quickly see what that looks like in an example. We have a clip here and this is what it looks like as normal. But now let's place our adjustment layer over top and see what happens. Nothing. That's because we haven't actually done anything with our adjustment layer yet. Let's make a quick color adjustment so that we can see a really dramatic before and after. So we can see that when we play back our clip, the changes take effect. But what happens when we delete the adjustment layer? The changes go away. The same thing also happens if it's there but you just disable it, or if you hide the layer that that adjustment layer is on. The main function of the adjustment layer is so that you can make changes to it rather than your specific clip. But why would you want to do that? There's actually a variety of different reasons. But let's say for example that you had a string of clips that were shot in the same way. And you want to stylize them with color. Drag your adjustment layer over top of all of them. Then make your changes based on one of the clips as an example. And then all of the other clips will show that color change that you just made. This can save you a lot of time. And if you've got multiple clips on top of each other, but you only want the adjustment layer to impact one of them, just place the adjustment layer over both, then take the one that you don't want it to be applied to and raise it to a track above the adjustment layer. Awesome. Another great use is to add effects. Adding them to the adjustment layer can give you an added degree of flexibility because now you can choose how long you want this effect to be stretched over even if it's over multiple clips. And if you want to delete it from each of the clips that it's used on, you only need to delete one thing as opposed to going into each individual clip. But there's also another piece that you might not realize. Some effects, like a Gaussian blur for example, have the ability to be keyframed in so that they gently come into effect. But some effects aren't set up that way necessarily. Take a simple color correction in Lumetri Color for example. How do you keyframe that? Well, you can do something similar with an adjustment layer. Make your correction, and for us, we'll just make it black and white. And then keyframe the opacity of your adjustment layer. Keyframe it to start at 100, and then keyframe it down to zero over time. And here what we've effectively done is keyframed our black and white clip to show color over time. The amount of possibilities that you have with adjustment layers is pretty crazy. So test it out, play around with it, and see what you can come up with. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you did, we have tons of other tutorials you can check out over at motionarray.com. We have an entire section of our website dedicated to just helping you learn Premiere Pro. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.